All right, right now I'm going to be doing a PRAM battery modification to my Apple Macintosh SE. So what I'm going to do for this modification is actually replace the soldered in half AA size battery, which I've actually already clipped out, and it is right here. It is made by Varda, and it is a 3 volt lithium half AA size battery. And unlike the newer Macintoshes, uh, like I said, this one is actually soldered on the board, so um, I can't replace it easy, easily. And I don't really want to replace it with another half AA size battery because they are known to leak. So anyway, I decided I was going to try to replace it with a CR2032 battery, which is also a 3 volt lithium battery, just with slightly less capacity, of course. Um, I got this at Radio Shack for $1.50 or so. Um, this is a CR2032 adapter, or a CR2032 battery holder, as you can see. Now, I was hoping these contacts on the bottom would be far enough apart that I could just simply put this on the board like this, but if I do compare it to the battery here, you can clearly see that um, it's not almost less than half the size of the battery, so I am going to have to use some wire. So I decided I would just use um, something like this, if I could pick it up. Anyway, something like this. Um, this is just simply a lead from a capacitor that I installed, um, just clipped off. I was just going to clip this off and kind of bend it into shape so I could actually put it in the board and uh, yeah, mount it that way. I mean, it won't have too much structural support, but it should be fine for just a quick battery swap every now and then. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open up the Macintosh SE here. So first I'm just going to lay it down on its face here. Unscrew the two bottom screws here. and the two in here, and I'll just resume the video once I get those out and the back off. Alright, as you can see, I have removed the back of the Macintosh SE. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove the logic board. So, the way to do that is, um, first you have to unplug all the cables that connect to it in there, and then you just simply pull it out slightly until these uh, notches line up with the uh, these tabs here and then it just swings out pretty easily. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and then I'll resume the video. Alright, so I've gotten the uh, three cables unplugged here, the main power and video cable and the floppy cable and scuzzy cable. So, there's actually still one connector connected and that is the speaker connector, but you can't actually remove that until you get the logic board partially out. So, I'm just going to pull it up and uh, once I get it swung out, uh, we will resume the video. Okay, as you can see, I have gotten the logic board most of the way out, so you can see the speaker connector there. Um, I'll go ahead and pull it out. Alright, the speaker connector is out, as you can see, and there is where the battery goes. And it looks as if there are actually two contact holes on the battery slot, so this actually might fit in. No, those are still too close together. I mean, too far apart for the battery to this holder to fit in, but um, I'll just connect. Uh, I'll just use some wire or something. That should work just fine. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and uh, get my soldering iron out, and we will... Um, start uh, by soldering uh, wires onto here, so be right back. Alright, I've got my soldering iron out as you can see and it is warmed up. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the two leads uh, that were that I clipped off from the original battery, so that'll be a two-hand job, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that off camera and uh, resume the video once that's done. 
All right, so as you can see, I got the uh, two leads out pretty easily. Um, I actually, some solder got into that one hole, but I won't even be using those holes anyway. So that's no problem. Um, I'm going to be using the two inner ones, so I don't have to use as much wire on it. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and sand down these contacts so I can actually solder to them. Um, sand down these two capacitor leads here. So once again, so I can solder to them and go ahead and attach them to here. So I'll be right back when that is done. All right, as you can see, I have soldered in the uh, CR2032 battery holder right there. Now I actually didn't use the second contest because I really didn't want to add any more solder to this board. So I just soldered it in to the um, two outer contacts there, as you can see. Now it's, it doesn't have much um, structural support to it I guess but it should be good enough just to simply replace a battery and uh, as you can see here I do have a CR2032 battery so I'm going to go ahead and put that in now it'll be a two hand job because I'm going to hold this as I put it in so I don't put too much stress on the solder joints so I'll do that real quick alright as you can see the battery is installed so I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, logic board back on the Macintosh SE over here, put the top case on, plug it in, and we'll give it a test. So yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, as you can see, I've gotten the Macintosh SE all put back together and hooked up to the uh, keyboard and mouse, and is ready to be powered up. So just so you know, the uh, battery does have a decent amount of clearance between the uh, metal um, brace above the logic board, so that's all good. It should work perfectly fine. So let's boot it up. Alright, it is now booting. Yeah, I don't have the zip drive plugged in right now, so... Alright, now before every time, before a battery was installed, every time you would reboot, it would lose all of its settings such as the time, the cursor speed, and the um, sound volume. So I'm going to go ahead and set the sound volume to 1, set the mouse speed to fast, and I'm going to go ahead and set the time as well. It is now 150. PM and the date is nine one two thousand fourteen. All right, so that's all set. Now let's go ahead and shut down the machine. Let it sit a bit without power and let's power it up.
Alright, and the mouse speed is still fast, I can tell. Let's go ahead into control panel here. The clock is still correct. And the date is still correct as well. The sound volume is also correct. Yep, successful. So that was a successful battery modification, or a successful PRAM battery modification to an Apple Macintosh SE. Hope you enjoyed this video. Actually, I'll go ahead and shut the machine down. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video.